Spotify and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this logo design using GIMP. So let's go ahead and open up our web browser. The first thing we'll do is download this font and we'll click free download here, download. And I'm going to put a link in the YouTube description so you can download this font as well. And we'll drag and drop the font into here. And then we're going to download this picture as well. So we'll go back to the web browser, click on this picture, click download. And I'll put links to both of these in the YouTube description. We just drag and drop them in the folder here for now. We're going to click on the zip file, right click, extract it. So we've got a folder with the font inside now. And we'll delete the zip file. We need to install this font on Windows so that GIMP can use it. I've already done this, but I'm going to show you how it's done. So we'll click, uh, so we can right click here on the file explorer, open a new file explorer, or we can just click here and press Control N to open a new one. And we will go to this PC and we'll go to C drive on our computer, go to Windows, go to Font, and I'm just going to open up this font folder and then drag the OTF file into here. And Windows tells me it's already there, so I'm going to replace it, but you shouldn't see that if you've never installed that font. So let's close this down, let's close this down, and let's open up GIMP. And we'll go to File New. When we click File New, we want to set the width to 1920 and the height to 1080. Click Advanced Options and set the resolution to 300. So it'll be like a 300 DPI image. So we can use it for print later if we want to print something. We'll set the precision to 32 bit floating point. The gamma will leave at linear. That should be fine. And then Fill Width, uh, Fill Width, we'll set to white here. And that's it. That's pretty much everything done. And we'll click OK. So we've got a blank canvas. Let's go to File, Save As. And on my desktop, I've got a folder here. And I'm going to call this Logo Design Dash 01. And we're going to call it Dash 01 because we're going to save different versions as we go along. We'll click Save. And then we'll go to Image. And we'll go to Guides. And we say New Guide by Percent. And then we set it to 50% and set it to Horizontal. And then click OK. So we've got a guideline going right through the middle of the, the, the canvas here. And we're going to do the same again. Guides, new guide. But this time we set it to vertical. Vertical. And then click OK. So now we've got the horizontal vertical, which gives us a center point here. We'll click on the ellipse tool here. And make sure that the anti-alias is turned on. And make sure feathering edge is set to zero value here. Zero, right? You can just turn it off, but just set it to zero and then go to new layer here, new layer and make sure it's set to transparency, fill with transparency and click OK. And then let's call this circle one, circle one. And we will left click and then start to drag down to the right hand direction, right bottom right. But as you see, we we're dragging, it's going to change shape. It's going to get squashed or too tall. So to fix that, we hold down the shift key on our keyboard. And when we hold down the shift key, we constrain the circle. But we want our circle to be in the center. So to make it in the center, we're going to hold down the control key as well. So really, I'm holding down the left mouse button first, then hold down the shift key, then hold down the control key at the same time, and drag to the right, bottom right, and we'll create this circle like this. So when you get the circle around this size, you can let go of the mouse button then let go of the shift and the control key and you've got this circle and we want to fill this circle in a um we want to fill it in a like a dark blue color so for now we'll click on the top foreground color here and we'll go to the blue colors here and we want to pick like a dark blue color something like this so you can pick any color you like to be fair but i'm going to use kind of like a dark blue color and I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to go to edit and fill with foreground color. Now it's kind of this dark blue. Then I'll go to select none. Let's go to file save and then we'll create another new blank layer. So here we set it to transparency again and this time we'll call it circle two. And we're going to click on this tool here. Uh, this black down at the bottom here and we're going to left click in here and drag to the top corner to make it white and then click OK. So now we've got dark blue at the top and we've got white at the bottom. 
we're going to click back on the ellipse tool and we will drag here again hold down the shift key hold down the control key and we're going to drag but we want to leave a border around the edge a thin border something around that sort of thickness right so let go of the left mouse button let go of the control key and the shift key we want a gap here like this and then we'll go to edit and fill with background color now we've got a white circle but we've got this blue border going around it so let's just check the artwork quickly and you'll see that blue border right it's slightly darker blue but it's we can change the colors quite easily later then we've got two sections around the same thickness here you see there's a white section and then there's a blue section so let's create those next let's go back to gimp uh, let's go back to gimp here and we'll go to select none file save create another new transparent layer transparency click ok let's call this circle free and we'll click on the ellipse tool again we'll left click in the center here hold down the shift key and the control key but this time we won't drag as far we'll drag to around here so we've got this uh, wider gap something like this should be good we've got a bigger gap here now I'm going to fill this with blue color so go to edit and fill with foreground here we've got a blue circle let's go to select none and then we'll go and create another new layer and it'll be transparent we'll click ok and we'll call it circle 4 and we'll click back on the ellipse tool we'll click in the center point here again we'll hold down the shift key and the control key and we want to make this the same thickness as the white one roughly around the same try and get it the same so I reckon around here is pretty good so this blue section and the white section are roughly the same size but we want to fill this middle circle the final circle in white so go to edit and fill with background color so we've got these circle shapes stacked up like this let's go to file save and file save as and we save it as version 2 let's save that okay let's go to select none and we're going to create another new layer so let's create the layer make sure it's transparency click ok and this time we're going to call it text and we'll click on the text tool here and then we'll click inside the canvas and i'm going to type in you can type whatever you like i'm going to type in capital letters logo design and then i'm going to click on the move tool and i'm going to drag that logo to this position and then we'll click back on the text tool and in the color options here um, we can just make sure we select the same color as the border so you can pick any color you like it doesn't have to be that color you can choose a different color if you like but basically I'm going to use the as default it'll be it's going to use the foreground color so this will be the foreground color as default so whatever's on the top the text will be that color this is quite good for us this color but we want to resize this text a little bit so we'll click on the text tool and click back here and select the text with our mouse so left click and drag and select all of the text inside of here and then just hold down the mouse button on this down arrow and we're going to set it to around i think around 310 should be good 310 and then we'll click on the move tool and we'll drag that text back to the center as you're dragging the text around you're going to see this little crosshair in the middle if I let go it's going to disappear right but around here you're going to see a little cross as I left click and drag and that allows us to get it right in the middle here it will snap to the middle like this so this should be good and we want to rotate this text before we do that what we'll do is right click and duplicate the layer duplicate so we've got two copies of this text and we're going to drag this top copy all the way down behind the background this is almost like a backup version of that text if we want to do a different style or something later this is like our backup version think of it that way so we'll click on the logo at the top here and we're going to right click and do alpha to selection here and this will basically select around the text like this around the inside and the outside of the text it's called a alpha to selection and we will go to uh, let's see select grow here and we want to grow it by 15 15 and then click OK 
And what that does is put a selection around the edge of the text. So we can go to our bucket tool now and then switch it to white. So we click these little arrows here and that switches it over to white at the top. And then we're going to hold down the control key and zoom in a little bit. And where the cross is on the mouse cursor, you see a cross. You want to move the cross inside of the content, the selection here, and then left click once. And that's going to fill everything on the outside white. And then do the same on the inside as well here. So fill that white. And we'll fill this. Just click inside here. Let's um, hold down the middle mouse button. And we want to fill inside here as well. We want to fill around the edge here inside white. And then we need to do the same here. Most of this will get done. But on this uh, letter, let's see, one of these letters will give us a problem. Die. The letter D here. Click inside here. So that gets filled in white side here. Everything else should be fine. Now we can go to select uh, none. And now we've got this text with this white border around it. Let's go to file, save as, and we save it as version three. Now we really want to rotate the text. So to zoom in and out, I'm holding down the control key and using my mouse wheel to pan the canvas, hold down the middle mouse button and just drag it around, right? So we can just reposition it. And we want to click on the um, rotate tool here, rotate tool. So we'll click that, click on the logo text at the top, and then click on the layer here. And then we want to rotate it minus 30 degrees, so minus 30, and then click rotate. It's going to rotate at this angle, and then we can slightly reposition the, reposition the text. So we use the move tool, and we're just going to drag it so that the... Um, the letter L here and the letter D flow off the canvas or flow out of this circle slightly, like this. Okay, let's go to File, Save, and we'll open up the folder on my desktop. So let's uh, do one thing. Let me just close my email. Let's minimize this. We'll close this. Well, we minimize this example. We open up this folder and we downloaded this image here, this unsplash image. Let's get GIMP back up. So we see GIMP here and we need to see the folder. So make sure the folder is on top and we're just going to drag this image into the bottom layer here and then click convert. And we're going to drag it one more time and then click convert again. Okay. So one of these layers, it doesn't matter which one, we're going to drag it above the white background. So now we can see it in the background and the other one, we're going to drag it so that it's above the uh, white circle here. We're going to click on that white circle and we're going to do select all. So go select all here and then go to edit, cut. And that removes the white circle from that layer. We'll click on this sky background and we're going to right click and we're going to add an alpha channel here. And then we're going to right click again and do a add a layer mask. And we're going to set black for transparency and click OK. And then we're going to go to edit and paste. And that will make the inside of this circle see through. Now we can see through it. We can go to select and we'll do, uh, let's see. In fact, what we need to do is click the anchor here, the green anchor. And then that will remove the selection as well. So now the inside is see through. All we want to do now is click on this other um, background here. We'll hold down the control key and zoom out a little bit. And we'll take the uh, resize tool, the scale tool here, and we'll click on the image. We'll zoom out. We'll hold down the control key and we're gonna zoom, we're gonna scale it to around this size. So it'll be around around 5,000 pixels wide, this size, and then click scale. Then we're going to use the move tool. So click the move tool and we'll hold down the control key and zoom back in. And we're just going to drag this image to around something like, I think, around here is going to look pretty good. So we just want to make sure this, we've got a gap here and a little gap down the side. We've got the palm tree and we've got like this jewel effect. Uh, background in the image and the sky in the background here. So let's go to file, save, file, export as, 
and we're going to export it as a PNG file first. So it's just called logo design-03 PNG. That's fine. It's going to save it in the same directory. We'll click export. And then all of these options here, we'll leave them as default and just click export. And then we'll go back to file, um, export as, and in the drop down options here, select file type. We're going to select JPEG. So we can compress it. So we select JPEG, click export. And in this time we set the compression down to around 79 and click export. So one's going to be like a high resolution and one's going to be like a, a more smaller file resolution. So if we go to file, save, minimize this. Then in our folder, we've got a PNG file. Here's the PNG. We can open that up. It's quite a large file. It's quite high resolution. Then we can see our logo that's been designed and we've got this background and then we've got um, the JPEG file here. So we've got a JPEG version that we can put on our website or if we want to send it to someone, it will be a much lower file size. It's only 286 kilobytes. This is eight megabytes. A couple of other tips. So if we open up, blend, um, open up GIMP again, let's go to file, save as and save it as a version four. Let's click save. Then um, if you want to change the background, you can hide this background. You can just have it white if you want. Or if you want to put some sort of color into it, you can click this background. So we hide this original one, click on the white background, and then you can go to like the, um, something like the gradient tool here. And then you can pick something like, uh, let's see, shape. We'll set it to radial. And then in here, we'll set it to foreground, uh, to background RGB. Just basically taking these two colors and it's going to make a gradient out of it. Then you can left click here and you can drag across like this. And then you can have some sort of colored background there. So we can go to file, save, and we'll save it as version five. And we can go to file, export as, and we'll export as a JPEG this time as version four. As an example, click export, leave it at 79, click export. Now we can close down GIMP and then we've got this version four with this gradient background with the sky still there, it looks quite nice. And then we've got the original one, uh, JPEG here with the background. And you can use any background, right? So when we did that layer mask for this center point, that could have been any type of image. So you just drag one into the background and then you can do a layer mask and you can have this circular, circular shape in the middle with a different color or a different background. So you can now experiment. You can change the colors of the logo. You can change the colors here around the edging. You can do pretty much whatever you want with this logo. So you've got the original make file. So we call this file here, this C, uh, this C, this file here is called like the original make file. So you can open it and edit it again. You can do work with it again. So that's the end of this tutorial. Let's close this down. That's how you go about creating this logo. This is the original one here. We can check the new one that we created today, uh, version three. We'll put them side by side. And we can see they're pretty close. The only main difference is gonna be the color. I think this one actually came out a little bit better because it's kind of oversized on the edge here, whereas this one sat inside. And I think it looks a little bit better when it's over the edge like this. So I think this is actually an improvement on the original one. So let's close this down. That's the end of this tutorial. And I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.